Hello, welcome to Einstein Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to talk about branch current method. So this is circuit analysis. We are going to talk about different kinds of method we can use to analyze current in a circuit. So let's look at the branch current method. So this method is a method in which current is assigned to each branch in an active element. So in this method, current is assigned to each active branch in the circuit. And once we assign the current to the active branch, we are going to also talk about, we apply the KCL, which is the Kettle's current law, to the node. And we also apply the KVL, which is Kettle's voltage law, to the node or an active loop. Are you okay? So this is what we are going to do in branch current method. We are going to assign current to active branches and apply KCL and apply KVL. So once we apply this KCL and KVL, we are going to get some equations and those series of equations are going to be solved using what? The simultaneous equation. Okay, so we will solve those series of equations using simultaneous equations. So let's look at a diagram. So this is our circuit and we have the active branches also there. So let's have a voltage source here. We also have one voltage source over here. So this is our circuit. Let's see, this is 4 ohm, 5 ohm. Let's make this 10 volts. We have 2 ohm and 6 volts. We are going to find the current in the circuit. Are you okay? So this is going to help us find current in each circuit. So we know that this is going to bring out a current. There is a current flow from this source. So, and once they get here, there's a current flow in this part. So let's call this I1, call this I2, and call this I3. So with the branch current analysis, we are going to apply KCL, meaning at a node, talking about, let's call here node C, what happens? So we consider at node C, at node C, the current entering is equal to the current leaving. So I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. We have an equation one. Are we okay? And we are also going to apply KVL in a loop. When we talk about a loop, that's a closed path. So A, let's say here B, C, and D. So a loop can be A, C, D, b and back to a so we will consider this loop let me draw the loop again which contains the four ohm resistor and the two this voltage source and that so this is a loop a c d b a and this we have the current i1 moving in this direction and here we have the current i3 so once we have this loop drawn, we also make the voltage analysis from this loop. What do we know? We know that we have one 4 ohm here, and this resistor is also 2 ohms. We know that the voltage drop in this resistor plus this resistor will be equal to the voltage 6 volts. Are we okay? So we are going to say voltage from Ohm's law, we know V is I, R. Are you okay? So, meaning voltage drop I, I, which is here, by the 4 ohm is 
one voltage drop plus I3 multiplying the two ohm is going to give us the six volts. So this is also using the KVL analysis for a closed loop. It's very simple. Let's solve an example and see how best we can apply this method. So example one, find the current in all parts of the circuit. The current flowing through all parts of the circuit and we are going to use the branch current analysis. So we have our circuit with the voltage source, we have our resistors and the direction of the current. So right away, how do we solve this question? What we have to do first is we only know the direction of the current. So first, let's assign symbols to the unknown current. So you can assign symbols so that you can identify. So assign symbols to the unknown currents. So that's, we are going to call the current I1, I2, and I3. Are we okay? So here I would prefer to call this current I1. So this is I1 current. Let's call this I1. I'll call this current as I2. So this is I2. And this is I3. Are we okay? So we've assigned current, which is the symbols to the unknown current. What do we have to do? We know that in branch current analysis, we are going to use the KCL and KVL. So we have to get a node and we also have to get a loop. So let's also assign numbers or digits, anything that we can use to identify a node or anything we can use to identify a particular branch. So I will prefer to also call here as, I will label it A, I will call here B, C, and call this point D. So E and F. You can redraw the diagram so that you can get it well. So this is the label which is going to help me get the loop and the node. I can start with application of the KCL because we are going to apply two things here. We either apply KVL and we are also going to apply the KCL. So the simplest one is applying the KCL. So first, at node C, at node C, this C part, what do we see for KCL? We are going to apply the KCL, which is current I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. Let's call this as equation A. We are to identify the current in all parts. So we've applied at node C the Ketchell's current law. Let's start with the KVL. So KCL is done. Let's try with the KVL. So with the KVL applying KVL to the loop. Which loop do we have to identify first? We can start with the first loop, which is loop A, B, C, F, A. So A, B, C, F, A, back to that. So we can draw a small portion of that loop which is going to be in this form. This is it. We have our two ohm resistor in this way. This is the eight and this is the voltage source. And we can close it as this. So this is the loop A, B, C, F, A. So this is two ohm and the current here, we call it I1. This current, we call it I3, and this is 8 ohms. This voltage is 32. So this is a loop. We are going to apply 
our equation. We know that from Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, right? Which is current multiplying the resistance. So we know that the voltage drop across resistor 1 plus the voltage drop across resistor 2 should be equal to the total voltage in the circuit. So if that is the case, let's apply it here. So I'm going to say voltage drop across resistor 1, which is I1, will be the resistance 2 multiplied by the current flowing through it, I1, plus the voltage drop across resistor 2. That's 8 multiplying the current flowing through it, that's I3, should be equal to the total voltage, which is 32. So I can simplify this to get 2I1 plus 8I3 equal to 32. Let me call this equation 1. So now we have one equation. We have another loop to make the analysis, which is loop 2. So this is loop 2. We also have to consider loop 2 to get another equation. So let's look at how loop 2 is going to look at and get it so loop 2 is also going to be in this form you can go back and check the diagram again this is it we have our voltage source also that there is this resistor also here and it closes so this is the loop So we have E, F, C, and D. So the loop is, so this is our 4 ohms. And the current flowing through this part is I2. So I2 is flowing through this. And this is 8 ohm. And the current is I3. This is 20 volts. So the same principle that we apply to the first, we can apply it here. That the voltage drop across this resistor plus that should be equal to the total voltage in the closed loop. That's the Kettle's voltage law. So I'm going to say for multiplying, what is the current flowing through the four, which is I2 plus the eight the current flowing through it is I3 should give you 20. And when you break this down, that is 4I2 plus 8I3 should be 20. That's my equation 2 for the second loop. So now we have the first equation written in this form, which is 2I1 plus 8I3 equal to 32. That, this is what? equation one so we cannot solve this simultaneously until we make some changes but from equation a from equation a we saw that we can make i2 equal to i3 minus this is i1 so i1 is i3 minus I2 this way. So let's also call this equation 3. So we can bring this equation 3 into one of the equation and make an analysis. Bring in equation 3. So you can put equation 3 into equation 1. So this part is now mathematics. The electricity part is done and the rest is mathematics so i'm putting equation 3 into equation 1 and this is going to give me 2 the i1 which we know is i3 minus i2 plus 8i3 equal to 32 so this is going to give me 2i3 minus 2i2 plus that equal to we can simplify this by saying this is going to give me negative 2i2 plus 10i3 equal to 32. Let's call this equation 
4. Now, when you check equation 4 and equation 2, equation 4 and equation 2, they are in terms of I2 and I3. So you can solve equation 2 and equation 4 using simultaneous equation. Are you okay? So when you solve equation 4 and equation 2, simultaneously your i2 using your calculator you can do that your i2 is going to give you negative one ampere and your i3 is also going to give you three amperes are you okay so you are going to get that and we also know the formula from equation three that i1 is equal to i Three minus I two. This means that if I three is three minus I two, which is negative one, then our I one is going to give us what? Four amperes. So this is for I one. So now the current through the circuit is I one is four amperes, I two is negative one, and I three is three. What does the negative I 2 means this means that the direction of current i2 should be reversed so now the original drawing of the circuit is going to be this way let's get it so this is the first resistor going into the second resistor let's have this is the voltage source this is the middle resistor here this is our voltage source also for the last part. So we can make the current analysis. I1 is 4 amperes, positive, meaning the direction is true. So we have I1 as 4 amperes here. I2 is negative 1. In the previous diagram, I2 was this way. And the answer is coming out negative, meaning it does not look like that so i2 is also that way and i3 is also positive 3 meaning it's its original position is true so 4 this is 1 and this is 3 to make sense at this node such that the current 4 coming into the node is equal to the 3 plus the 1 living so this is all about the branch current analysis check out the next episode for example two thank you subscribe and share the video